We are in Brain, a company at the intersection of MedTech, deep tech, and digital health using graphene to decode neural signals into breakthrough medical solutions. We are a 50 people team divided into two companies. In Brain, does applications for the central nervous system, and in Nervia, is a collaboration with Merck for applications in the peripheral nervous system. Like this, we can capture the combined opportunity of neuro and bioelectronics, which is together $25 billion. I have a secret on breaking news. We just got approval for the first in human, which is the first time graphene will be placed in the brain of a human being, which is a historic event. Why do we need graphene? Because after years of clinical practice with metals like platinum and iridium, we've been only able to decode the size of a zebra fish brain, which is around 100,000 neurons. However, the brain is nearly 100 billion neurons, and one out of three people have a neurological related disorders, 30% are refractory to medical treatment, and this causes a huge uh, burden for the healthcare system, about 800 billion per year. And every leap in humanity has been linked to a key material. From a stone age to silicon age, where we are today, we believe that bidimensional materials like graphene represent a breakthrough opportunity in neurotechnology. Graphene is the thinnest material known to man. It's an atom thick, yet it's 200 times stronger than steel, biocompatible, flexible, which makes it an ideal candidate for a neural interface. What is the problem? That current neural and bioelectronic therapies are lagging behind. They are based on big metal platforms that are bulky and need a lot of power to operate. We have also low density and poor resolution interfaces. These, as you see, can fit maybe at max one or two contacts on the nuclei and not ideally in the right side of the nuclei. Plus, most of them, they can only decode or stimulate, but don't respond in open or closed loop. This is all we are solving. Actually, we are developing a head-mounted platform that operates with a cortical brain-computer interface module and a deeper interface that collaborate together in a bidirectional way actually decoding live and real-time pathological biomarkers and creating therapeutic applications. The brain communicates like a radio with frequency brain, uh, waves. And actually, each of these frequency waves are in different areas of the brain and actually decode and operate different functions. Actually, graphene outperforms metal in the identification of, of all these frequency waves and actually is able to decode these biomarkers in very high resolution. That's what we are doing, decoding networks in high resolution. And what you have in the screen is just an example of a motor symptom, a Parkinson um, opportunity, where actually we place a cortical interface on the motor cortex of the brain and a deeper interface in the basal ganglia, and together identify these pathological biomarkers that need to be actually corrected to keep those patients in the highest percentage of on time, on therapy, without travels on symptoms. We are building in brain as a biotech platform. The first application is Parkinson's disease because it's very easy to disrupt the low uh, count and metal uh, business. The second is epilepsy. And the third one is more on the brain computer interface and translation of thought to speech. This is the comparison versus metal. You have, uh, on the metal side, millimetric sizes, about six millimeter a square contact size, very low count. On the right, you have graphene with micrometric, micrometric precision, about 25 micrometers to 300 micrometer sizes, up to 1,024 contacts. And again, you can also put it in cortical and deep interfaces. With that, we drive a higher um, decoding, a better modulation, and also we can miniaturize. This is just an example of our GLP safety study that led to the first in human clearance, which compares the decoding accuracy of metals, which is about 50%, to the decoding accuracy of graphene, which is about 90 to 100%. 
And the more contacts you have, the better the accuracy becomes. And then what you can see on the right is actually the precision that we can drive in identifying these local field potentials from the stimulation, in the case of this ship, of neck muscles, jaw muscles, or upper lip muscles to be very precise. The applications here are two more an epilepsy resections, but also the programming of prosthesis, for instance, with very high resolution. Now, also in low resolution, when it becomes about the brain, it's more complex than what we think. On the right, you see a 36 contact interface with one centimeter um, electrode interspace. What do you know from there? What can you do from there? Not much, because what you see is that the brain is dynamic and is actually uh, evolving as it's operating a particular task. So here we tested our 256 channel interface, and what you can see is that also um, in the low graph, you see the same in very slow motion, which corresponds to very slow waves that are also on the brain at frequency waves of 0.01 hertz or 0.5 hertz, which actually metals cannot see. So this complexity is what we can actually undercover with graphene. And by the way, on those slow waves is where actually we can see um, the preliminary um, buildup of an epileptic seizure so we can stop it. We have published that in Nature, as you see. Now, when we are decoding motor networks, many players are trying to close the loop and treat Parkinson's disease with a beta band. And here we demonstrate in a preclinical experiment with pigs that actually moving the leg of the pig up and down intraoperatively uh, show us that the decoding of movement is much more complex than just one beta band. Here you have alpha, beta, gamma, low gamma, high gamma, and you can see how the leg goes up and down. Different biomarkers are involved on that, and therefore the decoding, again, is more complex than just one biomarker. So with 140 contacts, we have demonstrated that actually we can identify these biomarkers in micrometer, mic micrometric space. So you will see on the upper graph that in about 200 micrometers, we can identify physiological tremor. This is a non-human primate that uh, we've been having in a chronic mode for three months. And then on the pathological tremor side on the bottom graph, you can see bright marks that show up the correlation to tremor um, and the understanding of what biomarker actually best correlate to tremor. Then we have used that on a very uh, advanced machine learning algorithm to actually create the closed loop and we have achieved therapeutic response actually using 50 to 70% less energy and time requirements. So we have, we are advancing with our two products. The first one is a cortical interface that will be soon commercialized. This is the one that is going to first in human, it's just a 510K. And the second is the chronic platform that as you see, obtain FDA breakthrough designation and is going now also towards first in human with our series B round. But that's not it. We are in a mission to decode the whole neural system, and that's why we partner with uh, Merck to actually develop also applications on the peripheral nerve. Why? Because the vagus nerve is the perfect gate, gate from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system, and it commands most of our most important organs. So there's a lot of applications that we can develop there. And this is what we are doing. We want to disrupt the low density market and start from where it exists today, the one seven billion opportunity with uh, currently reimbursement codes, and then keep on going towards the more brain computer interface market that is now being developed by players like Neuralink and Precision, and then end up on that bigger opportunity um, that combined makes the 25 billion. Our team has done it before. Um, it's a very knowledgeable team from materials, but also from industry. They were in Philips, then they created in Sapiens. Sapiens was acquired by Medtronic. They stay in Medtronic. Then they created Onward, and now they are in Brain. From the clinical board, we have uh, frontier centers like Stanford, but also Oxford, UCL. And by the way, we also have visionaries that, like the Graphene uh, Nobel Prize laureate, Sir Kostya Novoselov that is also keeping us at the forefront of other bidimensional materials and also on the evolutions of graphene. This is it, we have a round open, we are closing. Actually, we have a term sheet um, that we are signing, but we have a still a space for five to 10 million for a, an additional player. 
And I hope you join us in lighting up the path to a better neural future for improving patients' lives. Thank you.